All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, we're going to talk about figs, of course. And uh, in today's video, I want to focus on varieties. I have a very interesting article that we're going to read uh, that was written by, I think, the owners, at least some people that are really well-respected fig growers. I think they're the owners of Belfiore Nursery. Don't quote me on that. But the article here is uh, titled Fig, Forgotten Varieties of Northern Italy. And it was written by Ugo and Giacomo Fiorini. And they're, of course, at least associated with Belfiore Nursery in Italy. And that is really one of the most well-respected nurseries, not just for figs, but for just growing fruit in general in all of Europe. Um, and these guys really, really know what they're talking about. I had no idea until a friend of mine, actually a viewer of mine, Gabriel, shout out to Gabriel, had reached out to me. Um, after watching my last video on uh, on Vertolino, a fig that I had reviewed, and he sent me some interesting information. And uh, at least in the last month, he actually sent me this article, and I was really impressed and really excited for what I had saw and read in this particular article. So in the article, we're going to read through this, and we're going to talk about four different varieties that they recommend for northern climates or northern Italy. Um, they're also talking about here in the beginning about how figs are grown in those particular climates and the challenges that that presents. And really, the whole main purpose of this is that it really, a lot of the information in this translates super well to a lot of us in the United States. Now, a lot of this isn't going to translate well for someone in California or Southern California, uh, sp particularly, or someone in the desert, someone really far south. But for those of us in humid places with shorter season climates, uh, we can really benefit from a lot of this information in here. And I think it, again, it just translates super well with what I see here in my yard in the Philadelphia area. And it really parallels super well with what we've been talking about for years now on the channel. And a lot of the conclusions that we've come to over the years and we've talked about these conclusions and we've talked about these varieties because it's not just enough really to to grow figs the right way but we need to focus on the varieties having the right variety goes such a long way depending on where you guys live the quality of the fruits is highly subjected to the rain the moisture the climate that you're in the season that they're ripening in there's so many variables um and just having the right genetics, just again, it goes such a long way to achieving that right experience that we're all looking for, right? Just like a nice bottle of wine, we're looking for that nice experience. It's the same thing with figs. We want to have that awesome experience, and we can't have that if we have the wrong variety where we're growing our figs. So... Let's talk now about this article here. They have four photos of different varieties here that they're they're mentioning here in the um, in the article. It starts off here about the forgotten varieties, figs suitable for cultivation in the regions of northern Italy. The fig, as we all know, is a Mediterranean plant. In the central southern Italian regions, we find countless varieties with an exquisite taste. White figs, black, red, purple figs, even striped figs in various colors there to indulge yourself the environment is suitable for cultivation sun and heat are generally not lacking and therefore the cultivation of the fig is relatively easy i mean we've been saying that for years people in southern california they don't know how easy they got it uh you know especially where if it's somewhere with a lot of sun a lot of heat and the weather is of course dry especially in the summer so the crops are abundant in uh in northern italy however in colder environments and uh, with considerable humidity, both in the air and in the soil, it is much more difficult to have good fig fruits. Varieties with the synconium, a.k.a. kind of the shape of the fruit, is either small or at most medium and not very rich in pulp are certainly to be preferred since this with a high humidity value often sours. The optimal ripening must not be too late. Considering the limited insulation and, and the lower temperatures, the choice is therefore limited. To find interesting varieties suitable for our purpose, we must therefore rediscover some ancient regional varieties. Here we describe four definitely worthy of cultivation. 
So again, it's interesting that they mentioned the size of the fruit when I really, I think, have taken it a little bit of a step further and, and really talk about the shape of the fruit and how the shape, I think, is really um, impacting the rain resistance and the split resistance of the particular varieties. Uh, but they also mentioned something that I have never really thought of, which is a fig that's not very rich in pulp, which I think what that means is it doesn't have a lot of pulp. So some varieties have a thicker skin and less pulp, some varieties have more of a pith. Some varieties are, are all pulp with a very thin skin. And I think uh, what they're saying here is if, if there's less of that pulp, more of the skin, more of the synconium, like more of that outer shell of the pulp, you then end up having a, a better option is what I think they're getting at. So the, the first variety they mention is called fig from the bone. Of course, this isn't the real name for it. This is just the translation of it. It's a Piedmontese typicality. It's a Piedmontese variety in ancient times cultivated above all in the Pinarolo area and described by most important pomologists, by the most important pomologists, which is Galicio. And he had really traveled all throughout Italy and um, wrote about and documented and even drew a lot of the major fruits that were grown in Italy at that time and put them all together into a, a book. And that was a really important document for people of Italy who, who care about fruit. Um, and, of course, the Dalloso is one of them in that book. Or, or sorry, the fig from the bone is one of them in that book. He's, they say, uh, he, the article says, it's a black fig with a bright red pulp that bears fruit on both the one-year-old branches, leading to the ripening of good brevas and on new branches ripening the excellent ones the main which ripen in august through september the main in 20 to 30 percent of the cases looks like a rather bizarre fruit during the growth a constriction is evident at about a half of its length the epidermis of the skin near the eye wraps around itself towards the inside of the fruit hardening to form a sort of core hence the name of the fig daloso or federifo, which means bearing a fetus. I guess that's somewhat of a translation there. Who knows if that's really the real translation. In some cases, at some point in maturation, the lower part of the mutated fig becomes black before the upper part, and therefore the fruit appears to be as a two-colored whole. In other cases, also depending on the seasonal trend, the two parts take on a more or less dark color at the same time. The remaining 70% of the fruit is peripheral, slightly elongated, the flavor is excellent in both types of fruiting. So this one is, as you guys now have found out, is called the Daloso. And wouldn't you believe, of course, I have talked about the Daloso quite a bit and hold it in high regard. And would also agree that it's definitely worthy of cultivation. And we've talked about it here on the YouTube channel in numerous videos now. You can see here's the fruit showing you the uh, weird mule figs that can occur. Uh, then, of course, we ripened it this year. Even Harvey's photo here shows the, uh, the interesting mule part that can happen. But this is what it looked like after planting the variety in the ground this year and then reviewing it four or five months ago, talking about really how amazing that variety had impressed me this year, uh, really above and beyond any of my expectations and my experiences from prior years, because we planted it in the ground. And when you plant these figs in the ground, they tend to seem to have more energy that is directed into the fruits, which then changes the length of the stem and also changes the length of the neck, as you can see here on the fruit. And of course, this becomes a much more slender body, which typically has less pulp, right? Um, or a less richness to the pulp as maybe this uh, not a very rich pulp as they kind of would uh, as it's translating to in this article uh, so super interesting that of course now this is vari one variety that I've been highly recommending and of course the information so far is lining up well let's go on to the next variety we'll skip this one here this one's called we'll go to this third one it's called Moro de Caneva uh, who would have thought, right? 
particular fig from the province of Porterone, to be exact, from the town of Caneva Moro, as the same as the name implies, dark purple with lighter in, in, uh, reflections, thin, elongated, and with a very thin skin, soft and tasty red pulp. Also produces some Breba in July, but its products in August and September are very popular. Soft and sweet, rarely acidic. It is a large local fruit company. I guess the translation there is that it it is a commercial variety, but it can also be successfully cultivated in other areas of the north. And again, we've been doing the same thing. We've been talking about Moro de Caneva for years. I was so excited to get this variety, to be able to grow it here in the United States. It's just fantastic. It has the right shape. The stems are long. The The fig hangs super well. We talk about how it almost never splits. Uh, it rarely spoils. It rarely sours. Um, it ripens early. The same thing with the Daloso ripens reasonably early. Um, Moro de Caneva even hangs super well. And the reason why that's important is because instead of having the eye pointed towards the sky as it's swelling... The rain is not hitting the eye. The rain is hitting the upper parts of the fig, the less sensitive parts of the fig, and the eye is somewhat protected in, in uh, you know, in moderate to low rain events. So therefore, the the fruit doesn't tend to expand very quickly and and split very often. Uh, that's kind of what happens with these fruits here, guys. They absorb the water through their skin and they expand too quickly and then they split. Um, okay, so the, and you know what's interesting, because the fig ripens from the bottom up. So if you can protect the bottom of the fruit, the top of the fruit's going to be a bit harder, less ripe, and less, um, less, uh, more, um, not as easily absorbed, that water will not be easily absor absorbed into the skin therefore creating less problems. But if the bottom of the fruit is getting hit by a lot of that rain, well, then you're most certainly in trouble. The next variety here is called uh, Fico Salame. It's an excellent white fig, typical of the Otrepo Pavise, with an unmistakable elongated salami shape. Double fruiting, the Brabas ripen in early July, are very good, and the one, the main crop, in August through September, are unsurpassed. Fine, sugary red pulp, Rarely sours, thanks to its narrow and long shape. It has unlimited quantities of pulp and wrinkles very quickly, even drying on the plant, which is, you know, again, going back again to what we've been preaching. Got to find varieties that dry well on the tree, that wrinkle very quickly. Uh, not only do they dry, but they have drying capabilities, but they do it rather quickly. They have a short hang time, even has the right long and narrow shape that we look for. What's really been impressive about Salame is that actually the another name for this particular fig is Vertolino. And here's Vertolino. We've just finally got a taste of this variety four or five months ago. And we did a video, and we've been t talking about it and documenting it. Already put it into our among our best varieties here that we have in our spreadsheet. You guys can view any of these varieties at any time. Um... This is, again, just, I, I would describe it as one of the best tasting figs that also performs among the best. It really is got everything. It really is just seriously, I think it may, we'll have to see how Black Celeste, I think really the running, the best figs I grow is probably somewhere a race between Verdino del Nord, Black Celeste, and this one here, Vertolino. I think there's probably going to be some sort of, uh, you know, race between really just those three. Um, you know, I wonder if even Smith or Hatib de Argentile could maybe break into that or maybe even Rosalino. But uh, for now, I, I really think the race is just those, th it's really among those three. Um, so here's the last one. This one's called um, Segalin or Secolino. And it's a small fig typical of the Venetia region, which can also be grown in lowland areas, rich in humidity. It is small and quite dry and never goes sour. The pulp is deep red. The skin is dark green. And the fruit, if left on the plant in a favorable season, dries. 
becoming light brown with a pulp of unsurpassed sweetness. And that light brown color is usually what I describe as that cork tint that these figs get. The variety is generally only producing main crop. That is, uh, it produces a gradual ripening from the end of August to mid-October. So a long production producing mostly main crop and um, does extremely well with humidity, dries super well, well, and never, never goes sour. If I hear those words, I immediately think, wow, got to grow that fig. But guess what? I already am. <laughs> and it is one of the best figs I grow. This is uh, Segalin Segalino Figano, or in some dialects, Figoin. And what do we know about Figoin? Well, another name for that is Verdino del Nord. So again, what they're describing here in this article are four of some of the best figs I've grown. I've been pr promoting them. I've been talking about them, trying to get more people aware about them. Um, here, if we zoom in really quickly, here's actually the fruits of the photos. I, it doesn't look, uh, it looks so much like Verdino del Nord or Figoin that it's, uh, it's scary. You know, it's got the red eye. That's a great distinctive feature. We got the right shape to the fruit, which is the most important feature when identifying a fig. The skin's right. The pulp is right. Uh, the colors are right. And even the stem length is nice. This is a really nice characteristic. of The, the stem is typically quite long, hangs well. Um, and there's even some interesting things that happen here when the, the stem attaches to the neck. It forms uh, some interesting characteristics there and then of course looking at the leaf pattern in the tree uh, translating a lot of this here from uh, English or from Italian into English uh, it really does match for this particular variety uh, it's just amazing I think you know that um, for me at least it's nice that these European growers they're such well-respected people you know these aren't new varieties either you know these are uh, forgotten varieties that have been around for a long time. It's not like I'm making the discovery here of these varieties. These have already been around, and they're doing the same thing. They know that they've already been around, and they're giving them the respect that they deserve. And that's all I've ever done here on this channel in terms of fig varieties. I've tried to promote the ones that really and truly are the best to make you guys aware of them. And yeah, sometimes maybe the prices get a little out of control on some of these varieties. But at the end of the day, we're doing the right thing. We are, instead of keeping this information myself, learning about all these varieties and then never telling any anyone, never telling a soul, which would be very difficult for me, um, we're doing a selfless thing here. And we are contributing in some way to society. We are letting people know and promoting that these are the long lost fig varieties of Italy and that they deserve respect. They deserve your attention. And it's not just me who is saying that it's also these super well-respected fig growers from Belfiore nursery. And I really do thank Gabriel for reaching out to me and making this article, uh, making this, uh, you know, to my attention, I probably am going to reach out to these gentlemen um, see if they'll be willing to talk to me, um, see if they have any other information about this particular subject, any other varieties that they might recommend. Um, and I would like to recommend some varieties to them as well, as you know, these aren't the only varieties that, uh, that are well worth growing in Northern Italy as if it's going to grow well there, it's going to grow well here and vice versa. And I have to say that varieties like Smith, excuse me, Hative de Argentile, and Black Celeste, those are three really spectacular varieties that perform super well here that most of Europe does not have access to. And it wasn't until years that I had access to the varieties that we even mentioned in this, this article. Um, so I think it's only fair that... Um, 
you know, these European growers who have access to these varieties and maybe don't think too much of them, don't think too much of Vertolino, don't think too much of the Daloso, but, you know, these are three varieties that are really hard to find in Europe, and certainly I should make them uh, bring those varieties to their attention. Um, so that's kind of the video here, guys. I think it's uh, it's just such a nice, refreshing thing to hear, in a way, kind of, uh, you know, some, um, not that I really needed it, but like, uh, um, what's the word, like some uh, affirmation that I'm doing the right thing, that I'm on the right path, that I'm, you know, looking at this through the right lens. Um, so that this is just, this whole experience has just been really cool. And uh, I just really do. I appreciate these people and what they're doing. So uh, we'll talk to everybody soon, all right? Thank you so much here for watching. Um, I wish you guys the best. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, check out our blog, figboss.com. We'll catch you guys for the next one, all right? Take care.